Hi folks! We're back home now from our travels to Europe, and shortly after we returned, we received a new build report from the Kinetic Factory. This is a milestone report because it confirms the completion of the primary assembly. So we're going to show you what that looks like from the photos we just received. We're also going to see what the solar arch now looks like in rough form now that it has been attached to the main hull. You may recall from our last build report and design discussion that we had just received the renderings from an updated shape and location for the solar arch and we were showing you the actual renderings in that report. Um, so now it's been manufactured and actually fitted to the hull, so we'll see that in the photos to follow. As a continue of our design discussion from the previous episodes, we're also going to show you our solution to the issue of where to store two paddle or surfboards on a catamaran without tying them to the safety lines and thus obstructing the views out of the salon or having to carry them on top of your dinghy or davits, which can also be a nuisance uh, and can get in the way. So stay tuned for the short update in this episode. Welcome to Second Wind Adventures, where we start the next chapter in our life, where retirement can be fun, exciting, and challenging. Follow along with us as we continue to transition from our regular full-time work life to a more flexible lifestyle that includes cottage living, adventure travel, and our dream to circumnavigate the globe on a sailing catamaran. This is us, Alina and Monty. We would love if you joined us so that we could share with you the trials of achieving our goals. So let's start on page one. As you can see, all the major component pieces are together, tabbed, and the attachment points fared smooth. The windows on the hulls are also now cut out, and the hatches have been cut out and fitted to the openings. You can see from all the dusting on the floor that there has been a considerable amount of sanding or fairing occurring. So you'll see in the background, Halls 4 are in full prime condition and they're ready for painting. Hall 6202 is also in the background just behind Hall 4. On page 2, on the top first photo, this gives you a view of the forward underside of the catamaran and you can clearly see the points in white where the bridge deck was bonded. Where the lingerie and bowsprit go, you can see the temporary wooden jigs that are there, which will eventually be replaced by carbon structures when they are ready to be fitted. And in the middle photo, we can see a shot taken from outside the forward bulkhead, just inside the forward cockpit. This shot gives you a better view of the four big hatches, which are going to store our dive compressor, fenders, lines, and some other equipment. In the center between the winch mounts is the anchor locker. You can also see quite a bit of bonding and fairing for the parts of the cockpit seating and attachment to the forward bridge deck. And if you take a look at the third bottom photo, this photo now shows uh, what the complete transom area of the boat now looks like with the attachment of the rough solar arch structure. Remember that our build is the first, and I believe it's the only 54, that has the optional custom solar arch. So you wouldn't have seen this on any of the prior splashes of the other boats that have preceded ours. We decided to do this for a more integrated look uh, instead of an aftermarket solar arch, which is usually made of stainless steel tubing and, um, and solid uh, uh, solar panels. So that would completely uh, be a different look from what you see here in this photo. We have the added benefit of having more shading over the aft seating area as well with this integrated uh, solar arch um, and over the swim platform too. It will also offer more protection for the sun and weather for the tender, which will be mounted on the davits just underneath and behind the, um, the uh, transom area that you see in the photos. The carbon swim platform is also resting in its lowered position and you can see it spanning the gap between the sugar scoops in this picture. You'll also notice that there is a hollow recess under the solar arch. This will be covered with removable panels in order to hide the wiring for the solar panels and Starlink antenna. There will also be two down lights over the grill and the cooler bin on either side of the transom. This was a nice added touch that the designers came up with. 
And here are the better profile shots of the solar arch. Notice that there is a connection brace to the main coach roof to give it more support and strength. The arch is also tapered towards the end to better form to the coach roof. Again, very reminiscent of a whale tail spoiler on the old 911 sports cars. <clears throat> you either love it or you hate it, but it is functional in both cases. So remember these two shots and they'll come up in our design discussion following the build update. So now on page four, uh, we're giving you a shot of both engine bays and the brand new Yanmar 80 horsepower diesel engines with the SD60 sail drives. Uh, the integral alternators have not been fitted yet, but it's uh, good to see the engines in place anyway. There will be three blade gory feathering props on both drives in a counterclockwise rotating orientation. See, wasn't that good tech talk? I'm certainly impressed. <laughs> so finally on page five, we have two interior shots which showed the craftsmen at Kinetic busy fairing the interior. On the left, the port side owner's cabin with the bed over the bridge deck, just behind where the gentleman in the coveralls is standing. And in the second photo, um, this one shows you the length of the owner's hull from the convertible cabin office all the way from the back to the forward um, of the boat. So literally the view uh, when the doors are open are right down the entire length of the inside of that hull. You can also see the extended shelf edge under which uh, there are going to be some shelving built into the uh, side where the outbound hull is. So in our last update, we discussed some designs around the solar arch, and one of them had to do with using the same solar arch structure to design a location to store paddle or surfboards. So we, we chose to have solid composite boards instead of inflatable uh, boards and potentially even uh, electric surfboards. So um, these are going to be hard boards and, and we kind of we, we wanted to opt for more higher performance um, hard boards because obviously uh, inflatables have a tendency to flex and bend, um, especially if you take um, um, pedal boards into more choppy or wavy conditions. So we wanted a storage location that would, first of all, not obstruct outward visibility uh, you know, when you have a lot of people tying their boards to the lines or stanchions on the tow, tow rail. And we didn't want to encumber the use of the tender by placing them on top of the tender or the davits. Um, and potentially there could also be lines that get in the way. So strapping and um, uh, fixing the, um, the boards to davits wouldn't be a good idea. And we know that these are both traditional locations to store hard boards. Uh, but we didn't like either of them, so we wanted to find a more elegant solution for that. So we've worked with the design team at Kinetic, and we told them that we would prefer a high roof mount location, which would not obstruct outward views or cause cranial damage for people walking underneath them. Do you remember the previous video? Yeah, smacking <laughs> your head on it. <laughs> So the designers came up with an angular stack design, uh, which actually looks kind of similar to what you would see on a wake surfing boat tower. But for our boat, it's going to be located in a different orientation, just under the solar roof and made of uh, black carbon fiber to match the rest of the um, other appendages in the cockpit, such as, you know, the davits, the solar arch uh, supports and the coach roof supports as well. Um, we also talked about having these uh, board holders removable, uh, potentially even uh, reversible or foldable to get them out of the way if no boards are being carried or if they're actually in the water. So what do you guys think about this design? As usual, please like and subscribe and give us your comments as we love to hear them and we promise we'll respond to you as quickly as we can. So that's it for this update. I'm sure uh, when we get the next one, you're actually gonna, you're gonna see what it looks like manufactured and actually attached to the existing structure. Uh, and we'll also update you once again on uh, progress of the uh, fit out of the interior, which is also very exciting because then you're gonna start to see um, electronics and furniture within the uh, our build. So stay tuned uh, for the next episode where we're going to review and give you 
Also, our candid thoughts on the Bally uh, 4.2 condo Moran that we chartered <laughs> in Sardinia. And uh, boy, have I got a lot to say about slow boats focused on uh, luxury. Oh, yes. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.